How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Hi, everybody. Not a lot to talk about this week, obviously. I took off last week. It was my birthday weekend, my final year of my 30s. However, I was so sick. The entire weekend, I just slept. I slept through, through Mother's Day. I slept through my birthday. I slept all Friday. Uh, just I had, I was just sick, so I did not get a chance to do a show. And uh, my apologies, because there is a lot to talk about. Obviously, AW Collision was announced on Wednesday. It was not the announcement that they had anticipated. Neither WBD or AEW. The venue was announced for the first episode, but it's, it's, it, it's, it's to be announced next week. Could possibly be changed. CM Punk was semi-announced on a press release that was scrubbed Tuesday afternoon with his name removed due to behind-the-scenes issues. CM Punk put out a crazy tweet against uh, an Instagram story for, against Brian Alvarez, out of all people. You can't attack that sweet, sweet boy. Brian's a good boy. What the hell did he do? The fallout from SmackDown and build to next week's Night of Champions PLE. Also, double or nothing happening next week. And the passing of superstar Billy Graham, one of the most influential people in professional wrestling, which we're going to talk about. The reason why my dad got into wrestling. The reason why I'm into wrestling, most likely. And a whole lot more. Guys, this is a jam-packed show, so stay with us. Also, also... I'm going to give a little bit more insight on this punk thing because I spoke to somebody at WBD yesterday. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition with me, Andrew Zarian, here on Sports Byline. Hey, follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. I put out most of my, uh, my thoughts on professional wrestling on Twitter. I'm not a Facebook guy. I'm not on MySpace. I'm not on Friendster. What year is it? I'm on AIM. Let's go into this. Uh, on... Wednesday, it was officially announced during the upfronts that AEW Collision is official. The first show will be on Saturday, June 17th from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tony announced the dates on Dynamite as well. They'll be touring Canada following this. Saturday, June 17th, originally scheduled for the United Center in Chicago for CM Punk's big return. We'll find out on Wednesday. June 24th in Toronto, Hamilton on the 29th, Saskatchewan, July 8th. They're in Calgary, Alberta, Canada at the Saddle Dome on the 15th in the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey on the 22nd. I feel like, I feel like that, was, that was one of the old ECW bumpers where they would just run down all their dates, come to the Elks Lodge, the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. Uh, so they, they have their tour for the first half of the summer, people listed on the show are Miro, Samoa Joe, Thunder Rosa, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Andrade. These were names that we had discussed a couple of weeks ago on the show. CM Punk was pulled from the ads last minute. So I have seen imaging. Okay, I have seen imaging of, uh, of potential programs that Punk is going to be in immediately. I've seen imaging with him on that, that collision poster. This was a done deal. This was set. It was happening. The announcement was coming on Wednesday. Tuesday afternoon, uh, while we were recording, we're live, pal. There's a point of the show. If you go back to it, I told Garrett, hey, Garrett, I, I'm like, oh, somebody's messaging me. They said, when you're done with your radio show, message me. I got some news. I messaged this individual, and they told me that Punk has been pulled from the press release. And... They had assumed there were some internal problems, but what was going around at that time was that maybe Tony didn't want to spoil CM Punk on the at the upfronts. He wants to use it, obviously, for TV. Well, we found out that wasn't the case. There are behind-the-scenes issues. It seems like the latest issue is the expected return of Ace Steel and the rumors surrounding him not being allowed to be back inside of the buildings. Ace was reportedly rehired months ago. This is one of the rumors here. And has been helping remotely. I've also heard contradictory stories that that's not true. I got to follow up, but I, let's, let's go with the fact that that is at this point. 
And he was told that he can't go into the buildings. You know, and, and here's the thing. Ace Steel worked in NXT with, with no issues. And I'm not sure if Punk got him the job here, and that's why he went there to go work with his friend or uh, or what. But, you know, Ace Steel seems to be the holdout here. Ace reportedly has been hired months ago. Later, AEW and WBD made a statement this is actually, I'm sorry, WBD made the statement saying that CM Punk is not affiliated with Collision. Now, I followed up on this, and it seems like, you know, what happened was with that, I, I, I'm not reading too much into that statement from WBD. I think it was a, somebody reached out, and somebody in PR asked, and then they, they were just given a blanket answer of, like, he's not affiliated with Collision. I don't think that's the case here. Uh, so I'm not reading too much into that. Thursday, CM Punk got very vocal on social media. This is nutty. And this is the worst way to start this again. And it seems like nothing has been resolved. Or whatever was resolved is being undone at this point. Or listen, or, or this could be a lot of internet speculation and they're kind of letting it fly and they're kind of letting it play out because it's creating buzz and it's creating conversation. I don't know if it's creating the right type of buzz and conversation. Because once again, you know, as someone that covers this, it gets exhausting. That you, 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 you see this plan happening and you're looking forward to something. And this is for the fans too. And this turns people off. And then once again, there's another problem. So it could be a lot of hearsay. It could be a lot of rumors. I could tell you that WBD right now, uh, they're still under the impression from all people that I've spoken to that he is still coming back. There, there's no, I, I have not heard anything that this deal is over. It would be a travesty, I'll tell you that. It would be terrible. Personally, I think they need him. WBD wants him. You know, if this was a company doing 1.2 million viewers, 1 million viewers a week regularly, I would say, you know what, you're on the great you're on the right track. Why would you want to bring in someone like him at this point? But if you can make it work, you want to make it work. He's a big name, he's a huge attraction. People talk about him. I I mean, it's been almost a year we've been talking about this. Since September. Where is he? What is he coming back? Is he not coming back? And we're still in limbo here. Per Dave Meltzer and Wrestling Observer Radio, a backup plan is Daly's place. It's being worked out just in case if this deal falls through. Otherwise, it's likely going to be the United Center. I, I heard the same thing, but I mean, that could be a rumor. It could just be a contingency plan. Uh, they... You know, you kind of want a backup venue. You don't want to run the United Center if you don't have Punk. But this is fascinating to me that we're still into this. Listen, you know, the other problem here is, you know, I, I'm trying to understand all the sides to this. You know, why is Punk so upset with Brian? Why is Punk so angry about this? You know, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago. I think he very much wants his legacy to be a positive in the world of professional wrestling. And these things are not adding a positive reputation to his legacy. When he came back to AEW, this was his redo. And you know what? It totally rehabbed whatever negativity existed to towards him. Came here, said he wants to work with the young guys. He's building up this promotion. And it all fell apart. You don't want to see that. It's not interesting to me. I mean, I'm talking about it, obviously, because it's news. But as, as, as a fan of the product, it's, it really is a turnoff when this stuff is happening. And you've invested a lot of time and effort into this guy. And you look at the AW roster, they're splitting it, and which I welcome. I think it's necessary to get guys like Will Hobbs. Great example, right? Will Hobbs, Andrade, and Miro. Three names here that should be on TV regularly, but because of a two-hour time frame for them to get all their talent on they're not on they're not on every week sometimes they're on rampage which nobody watches no fault of AEW by the way that time slot is terrible if they were in a different day a different time slot with a one hour show I think it would do much better but 10 p.m I'm not watching on a Friday and a lot of you guys aren't either I, I I'm still Staying positive with this, and I think it's going to work out in the end. I, I, I don't think this is the end of it, but if it is, and I'm wrong, which I could be, uh, AEW really has to do something to push 
and, and get this, you know, and get their product into that million range and really make it must see TV. They have some momentum this summer. They got to continue with it, considering it's a, it's, a, it's a contract year. Whether or not they got that money yet or not, we're going to find out. They're getting some money for collision. That's for sure. They're not doing the show for free. I'll tell you that. I saw some rumors. Some, somebody on the internet is like, they're not getting paid for that show. It, it's exactly what they did with that. No, they're getting paid for that show. You're not, you're not traveling another day and putting on another show for free, guys. It doesn't work like that. But they got five hours of content to fill. So let's see what happens here. I don't know. Do, do you guys want to see Punk at this point? I, I still do. I think there's a large portion of the audience that does. Maybe there's a larger per- portion of the audience that has no clue any of this is going on. They're just, they're just watching TV. And then he shows up. You're like, wow, CM Punk's here. I got to watch every week. I don't know. I think I think with a second hour, uh, second show, you're going to present guys differently. You know, you have you have guys like Danielson, and this is something that I've said for a while. You know, everybody's in a trio, everybody's in a stable. Yeah, they're on TV, but they're not really wrestling every week. I want to see Kenny Omega in action every week. I want to see him in singles every week. I want to see Danielson every week. Why am I not getting those matches? Why am I not getting the top top guys all over this show every single week? You know, I thought Dynamite was a good show. They're obviously building their younger talent here. Same thing with, by the way, SmackDown. SmackDown was filled with NXT call-ups. Whether or not you think it's the right way, everybody's there investing in young talent. But you need to mix the, the stars that people want to watch and build the young guys up. These are all things that need to happen. When we come back, this and a whole lot more Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Superstar Billy Graham passed away at the age of 79. Billy had a a tremendous uh, run with bad health issues. I I know that he had a transplant a couple years ago. You know, this is all, a lot of this has to do with his steroid abuse. Uh, Graham admitted to taking steroids for nearly two decades, 20 years of regular steroid use, which greatly affected his health. WWE Hall of Fame in 2004, inducted by Triple H. He was inducted into the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame in 1996. The most imitated wrestler of all time with top guys. Uh, you know, my, I, was, I was talking to my dad yesterday, and we were just talking about wrestling. And, you know, Superstar Billy Graham came up, could pass away. And my father said, he's like, listen, that, that guy is the reason why I started watching wrestling. Yeah, of course, you had Bruno, you had all these guys, but... I mean, it really was. He 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 transcended that bodybuilder era. Imagine him in the 80s doing this. I mean, he was doing it in the 70s. 1961, he won a, a was a teen, uh, teen universe, whatever it was. Uh, in 71, 75, he was jacked to the gills. I'm, I'm sorry, 61, he won. 65, he started training and started doing steroids. Uh, he got big. He was a big Arnold guy. Him and Arnold and, and Colombo you saw all work out together. Uh, he really was an attraction. Because you had never seen anything like that. And then here comes Superstar Bill, you know, Billy Graham is there. And then you get Hogan. And you get Steiner. And you get Jesse Ventura. And you get everybody else that, that imitated this guy. Dusty Rhodes, which I find that to be so fascinating. He was a, a very influential guy in professional wrestling for the time period he was in. And he really changed how wrestlers look which i find i I mean that that always is amazing to me you know to be the first of that yeah 79 years old passed away let's go into something else here aw fight forever release date is here per fightful july 27th for the video game now i The success of this video game is going to be very interesting to me. Whether or not it's a success, whether or not it means anything, there are a a lot of people that believe that the boom period for WWE, obviously you had Austin and The Rock and you had everything was moving, but the video game brought in an audience that wasn't watching your product. I, I, I don't think people realize that. Obviously, wrestling was getting hot. 
those Nitro games, I would go over friends' houses that never played, never were into wrestling, and they had all the, they had the WCW games, and then WrestleMania, and then No Mercy. It really changed an entire generation of fan fandom. You you weren't able to play in a, in a in a really fun manner. Wrestling games were difficult. They weren't great. You had a couple games out there, but it really wasn't as accessible until uh, the THQ lineup came. And I know there are a lot of people within AEW that believe that the success of this game will bring in a new audience to their product. And I 100% believe that. But how complete is this game? We've seen the screenshots. I've been told it plays great. The controls are easy. You know, you don't have to... It's not a simulation game. It doesn't feel like the WWE games right now that... that you know, maybe it's a little bit more complicated for people. The feel is like no mercy. I don't know what that exactly means in 2023 for the feel to be like a game from 1999 or 2000. But uh, I'm hoping this game is a success for them. It'll, it'll open up a whole new avenue, which is going to be very interesting to see. Yes. You know what? There should be muffins in the back, John. In catering. They should have the muffins there. <laughs> Maybe that's one of the things. You know, like the weapons that you get under the ring. Ladder, table, chair, a muffin. You know? I think that could do that. It's wrestling. It's a video game. You can put whatever you want. It would be great. Producer John here. He's very invested. He's a Chicago boy. He's very invested in the CM Punk stuff. We, we talk off the air now all the time. He never was into wrestling until he started producing Wrestling Observer Live. I love it. Upcoming lineup for Double or Nothing. This is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm, listen, it's in Vegas, Memorial Day weekend. Whether or not it is a good weekend to run Vegas, we will, we will find out this year. But the ticket sales are not great versus last year. The card is, is built up. I mean, I, I kind of want to see a lot of this stuff now. We didn't really have a deep card announced until after Rampage. But here we go. AW World Championship. MJF defends against Sammy Guevara, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, and Darby Allen. AW Tag Team Titles. FTR versus Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. I hope Jeff Jarrett wins this title. I want Jeff Jarrett to be champion in, in this company. We saw Karen Jarrett in the AW. Wild. AW International Championship. Orange Cassidy defends in a 21 man blackjack battle royale. TNT title. Wardlow defends against Christian in a ladder match. Jamie Hayter defends the AW Women's Championship against Tony Storm. TBS Championship. Jade Cargill defends against Taya Valkyrie. This was added on. Rampage, Anarchy in the Arena, The Elite versus the Blackpool Combat Club. Unsanctioned match. You got Chris Jericho versus Adam Cole. And you got Gun the Guns and Ethan Page versus the Hardys and Isaiah Cassidy. All right, listen, it's a pay-per-view. They got the card. They got the card here. I don't know. You know, next week I'm going to have Nick Houseman on with me uh, to go over a lot of this stuff. And a lot of the a lot of the punk stuff is going to be, you know, we're going to know. We're going to have an answer here. But are you impressed with this pay-per-view? Are you impressed with this card? You know, I, I, I've been saying this for a while, and I said in the last segment, I, I, I'm tired of Kenny Omega being in these mixed tag matches. Not mixed tech, I'm sorry. The, 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 three, the trios matches. I, I, I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. It doesn't do anything for me anymore. You know, it's cool when you do it every once and, once and again and you see that the, he has a, a, a group together and a stable, but I mean, everybody's, everybody's in mixed, you know, uh, two tag matches or trio matches or four on fours. I, I want to see more. I want to see these great, you know, kick butt singles matches that we were getting all these years from him. And it's something that we haven't gotten that much. And I, I sometimes wonder why. Let's go into WWE a little bit. Night of Champions. Did you guys watch SmackDown? I, I was actually, I got to tell you, it was a very different SmackDown. Um, it opened up with the Bloodline segment, which was great. The Usos attacked Sammy and Kevin from behind, which set Roman off. 
and he flipped out on the Usos that had ruined his plans. He was, you know, educating Sammy. He was about to say what he wanted to say. We got we got Pretty Deadly defeating Butch and Rich Holland. Pretty Deadly came out to mixed response. Twitter does not know what to do with Pretty Deadly. I'm imagining a lot of these people do not watch NXT. I, I, I mean, by based on their response. Asuka defeated Zelina Vega. You got the Grayson Waller effect with AJ Styles. This was to promote the world title match at Night of Champions. Styles said that this was the longest he was out with an injury his entire career, which is very interesting because considering how high risk this guy was, he rarely got hurt. I don't know. You think I, I think it's going to be Seth. You put the title on Seth, and now you do Cody and Seth at SummerSlam. Cody wins it, and maybe Brock comes back, and you do a program with Brock. Maybe do a program with Styles. And Roman still has two title belts, which I have no idea what those titles are now. All right, whatever. But again, you're seeing this, right? You got Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller. You got Pretty Deadly on the show so far. Street Profits defeated LA Knight and Rick Boogs after LA Knight attacked Boogs after the match, essentially saying that he was he was the guy that, that lost and not him. Alba Fire and Issa Dawn. Defeated so sorry, my brain just froze here. My my notes are all wacky here. Anyway, I, I got to go back to this one. <laughs> I lost my notes. Uh, they they got called up. It was basically basically a squash match. Uh, we got Sheamus and Austin Theory. I'm going based on memory here, boys and girls. Because my notes are locked up. Uh, it, he he gave him a bro kick and left. Uh, there was an LWO segment, a match. Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar defeated Jimmy and Jay Uso. Now, this was interesting. This went 14 minutes. Kevin Owens showed up and distracted the Usos while Sammy interfered. Roman was sh shown backstage really angry and not happy. So this is leading into that split, right? This is leading into problems amongst everybody in the bloodline, which is fine. I, I actually don't want to see them break up. I know a lot of people do. I I I like how they've been how this has been going, but I guess you got it got to it has to reach that moment sometime. So what do you do here? Does Roman win the the tag titles? Or do the Usos interfere and cost Roman? Very interesting. I don't know how they'll do this. I'm very curious because this is a big show. Saturday, next weekend, May 27th, 1 p.m. Eastern on Peacock. Live from Saudi Arabia, which we'll talk about in the next segment when we come back because there's, I want to break this down. It's, it's a light card. There's not a lot of matches here on this card as of today. I'm sure they're going to add some more. But it looks good. I mean, the card looks like it's a really good card. And it's a fun, you know, it's a nice afternoon show. Who does it? Who doesn't mind an afternoon show? That's all I want, dude. All I want is these pay-per-views to be on at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't want to stay up. I want to be done. When we come back, we're going to break down Night of Champions and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Hey, did you know that the convention is happening? The F4W convention is happening in Las Vegas during Double or Nothing weekend. There you go. Look at my producer. I didn't even prep him on this. The F4W Las Vegas convention, Memorial Day weekend. For information on tickets and everything else, head on over to F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. There's going to be meet and greet opportunities, Q&A, sweet party, dinner, and a whole lot more. F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. Can't believe it's that time again. You know what else it is? Six years ago today. Do you know what happened? Six years ago today. I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds here to think about this. What happened today? Jinder Mahal 
won the WWE Championship, beating Randy Orton at Backlash. You know what? I love that. I thought it was great. I thought that was such a fantastic, out-of-nowhere win. Keeps people on their toes. And Randy kicked out at three. I don't know if you guys know that with that pin, which was interesting to see, too. Uh, very cool. I, I didn't. It didn't bother me. A lot of people were affected by that. I, I didn't really care. Here we go. Night of Champions coming up next week. 1 p.m. I'm going to be in my backyard. This is going to be great. I'm going to bring my TV out. I got a little TV that I roll out in the yard. I'm going to grill. I'm going to put on wrestling. I'm going to get tan. Perfect. That is a weekend that I want. I don't care about my birthday. That This is going to be my birthday weekend. Best thing in the world. I'm going to oil up and I'm going to lay out and I'm going to watch wrestling and I'm going to, I'm going to barbecue. Perfect. Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship on the line. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defend against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. You know, they could go two ways here. They could have Roman and Solo win. And this could lead into the Usos against them. They could be, they could, the Usos could cost them the win. Leading into a match also. There's different avenues. I kind of want to see Roman with four titles, you know? Have him hold everything. I'm into that. WWE Raw Women's Championship on the line. Bianca Belair defends against Asuka. Asuka hit her with that spicy mist. Burned her eyes. Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. I wonder if this is the last one. You know, so what happens here? Brock maybe bludgeons Cody. Cody loses, and now you have a follow-up match somewhere. Or Cody wins. I know that Brock really likes working with Cody, so... Interesting to see. World Heavyweight Championship Tournament Final. Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. I want to see AJ win, but I know that's not... The likelihood of that is not as high as, as it should be. You know, but if you have Seth win it and you build up Cody... That'll be a program as well. Th this match, following match, surprises me. Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch, I thought they would have done this at SummerSlam. I'm actually very surprised they're doing it now. With heel Trish. And the Intercontinental Championship is on the line. Gunther defends against Mustafa Ali, which will be a Gunther match. And I'm sure there's going to be more matches announced here. But, you know, two pay-per-views next week, back-to-back. -back. You got one on Saturday, you got one on Sunday. The Sunday one matters a little bit more than the Saturday one, if you ask me, as far as the company and everything else that's happening. Oh, by the way, Liv Morgan's injured. Forgot to bring that up. She was injured last week on SmackDown. And there's no time uh, for her return. There was a four-way match. There will be a four-way match, I should say, on, on, on May 29th. The teams of Raquel R Rodriguez and To Be Determined versus Ronda Rousey and Shayna, versus Damage Control, versus Chelsea and Sonya Deville. They got to build up these tags. They got to build them up. So let, let's go into this, right? Uh, I, I want to touch on Double or Nothing a little bit more. And we, Oh, also, we have New Japan pay-per-view. Let's talk about that. Tonight begins at 7.20 on New Japan World. You got a couple of cool matches here. You got Tanahashi and Will Ospreay for the IWGP United States Championship. You got Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, Shota Umino versus Okada, Ishii, and Rocky Romero. You got Hikaleo def uh, defending the and, and New Japan Strong Championship against Kenta, Fred Rosser, Juice Robinson, and a whole lot more here. But I want to I want to touch on Double or Nothing and and what happens here. So if they announce Punk. On Wednesday, should he show up or should the first showing be June 27th? I never thought that they would announce it or or I should say before all this happened, right? On Monday, I always thought, you know, they, they pull, you know, they, they're pulling from the presser, obviously. But on Wednesday, they would allude, you know, to his return. And that'll get everybody excited. So that dynamite that's in the Wintrust Arena cells 
and that collision show also sells because things are heating up now. You're going to get an idea of what's happening. I was under the impression that Samoa Joe would be the guy that feuds with Punk. And what a hot feud that would be, right? As your first feud coming into the company, I would tune in every, every Saturday to see that. I'm interested in that. I love their original program. All three matches were great. This would be their fourth match in the story of Samoa Joe and CM Punk. There's still that Ring of Honor connection because Joe is the Ring of Honor TV champion. And I'm glad to see that he's going to be on this show because he's a top name. And in WWE, you know, this was a guy that was challenging for the world title. This was a guy in the mix. Every time he was out there, he, he had a great match. And for someone like Punk to be in a program with him that he has a history with, he has respect for, I think it would have been a fantastic program. Now, whether or not that happens, I have no idea. I hope it does. But you have you had a unique opportunity with this, and with double with double or nothing, you know you're seeing that this card's a little messy. I, I'm not as invested in this four pillars as a lot of other people. I do think Jungle Boy go and heal would be interesting. My theory is you take him out of the jungle and he just evolves. He goes from the jungle to the forest, maybe to a farm. He becomes Farm Boy Jack Perry, and then eventually becomes City Boy Jack Perry. He's wearing slacks and loafers and, you know, glasses. I'm into this. Maybe he t he goes under MJF swing. You know, they, they, they've kind of been teasing that for a while. So, I don't know. I, I feel like it. I love everybody in this match. I feel like it was the wrong match at this moment. I, th this, this should be a singles and it should really highlight MJF. Uh, as being a dominant world champion. But listen, there's a reason why they do everything, right? There's a reason for this. I, I Adding the second show will probably help a lot with this. I have heard a couple of things, right? I have heard that there is a redesign, uh, minor tweaked version of this title coming. I know that AEW, did you see their new uh, logo patent, a uh, variant on the logo? I don't know if that has something to do with it. On May 16th, they filed a, uh, a trademark for a new variant for the logo. It's a little bit more sleek. I actually prefer the old logo more, the, the, the logo that we have right now. So I don't know what they would use that for, but maybe maybe that's a new revised version of it. Does that mean MJF would lose the title at some point if that title is being introduced? And who's his next opponent? You know, it, it, if you go based on you know, wrestling booking, you would imagine that maybe something happens in this match and it becomes maybe Darby Allen, right? Uh, somebody screws somebody and uh, from getting that pin. And now they're in a program. And MJF then picks somebody else, whoever the other person is, whether it's, you know, uh, Jungle Boy turning and helping MJF or Sammy helping MJF. You know, you could build the program that way. I'm going to give you my top opponents for MJF at this mega show they're going to be doing, right? Because that's the next big one. All in. Do a big one. Do Sting. Why not? Why not? Do a wacky main event. You, you don't have to switch the title. You have a pay-per-view the following week. Do Jeff Jarrett. Do something. Do an attraction with this if you're not going to tell us, you know, that title's going to change. I'd love to see that. And then what happens on that collision show with, you know, with Punk being on top of there and not the world title? These are all, I mean, these are all conversations that we're gonna, we're, we're having because we don't know. I, I, I honestly, I would love to, I would love to know the direction that they're going to go in, but I don't. And a lot of this is muddying it up. I do think that doing it in Daly's place is a bad idea. Uh, if they could make this work, I mean, you want that first show to be big, right? You want a packed 13,000, whatever, in the United Center on, on TN, TNT. I forgot what channel it was on. I don't, I don't think you want to do Daly's Place with a couple thousand people and you're, the guy that you sold for this show is not on the show. The other thing is, you know, this was never going to be a two-hour primetime show. This was going to be a one-hour show to get more talent on TV because they were going to cut 
dark and dark elevation. That was that was the story behind this. Dark and dark elevation went away because of exclusivity with Turner, with WBD. And it spiraled into this. You know, if you had a one hour show that that displayed, you know, Willow, Willow Nightingale or, or you know, uh, whoever else, uh, Bandito could headline it. Roosh could headline it. Andrade could handle it. You know, just guys that you're not, you want to present more. Maybe Andrade is not the guy, right? But but Powerhouse Hobbs, great example. Uh, you could have a lot of these younger guys that you're building. Takeshita. He could be the main event guy. And, and the expectation wasn't there. It wasn't as high as it is when you have a two-hour primetime show that you've told everybody is an A show. An A1. You can't go back now. The expectation has shifted. It's a different expectation, especially from 8 to 10 on Saturday. Very tough competition. If you don't have CM Punk, what happens to your numbers? And I'm not knocking the talent. You know, if it's Andrade and Miro and Samoa Joe and Powerhouse Hobbs and Thunder Rosa as your top talent on there every week consistently, is that enough to get 700 and 750,000 viewers a week? I think that's a healthy number. If they did 750 on the show, I think that's a very healthy number. They did 700 consistently every week. I would say that's a very healthy number. It's untested. It's a very aggressive time slot. Uh, there's a reason why Turner wants it on Saturday. For whatever reason this is. I, I got to look at the numbers. I got I to gotta contact the number guy, Brandon Thurston. There's nobody better at this than him. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll ask him this after the show. I'm curious what the current expectation is for numbers because you want to do better. Listen, you could put Big Bang Theory on that time slot and it could get a million viewers. Just saying, million. Let's say, let's say 700,000. Your cost is far less, but however, your ad revenue is less because that's not a key demo you're attracting. There's not too many 18 to 34-year-olds that are doing it, that are sitting there on a Saturday night. But you may be able to do it with CM Punk and Collision. Very interesting stuff. Going into our final segment here, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian here, final segment of the show. So now that I, this is my outro, okay? Guys, let's enjoy this. <laughs> we, we complain about wrestling. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of dumb stuff that happens on every show. However, this is the first time in history that there's so much of this product available to us. I had to explain to somebody the other day, I was at a bar, I was talking to somebody, actually it was somebody from WBD, and they were asking, how do I have the knowledge about wrestling? Because we were just having this like, you know, it was one of the, do you remember when this happened? Do you remember when that happened? You know, I, I know my history. And I was like, dude, there was no YouTube. You had a friend's older brother, a cousin that sent you tapes that they happened to see stuff. I had a friend that was sending me John Arezzi's radio show from Long Island. I had, my cousin was a tape trader in Florida and he would send me all the ECW tapes from like 96 on, uh, you know, all my new Japan experience, all my old Japan experience came from just piecing things together. This is the first time in history that it's all in front of you, the best and the worst. It's a very blessed period for the, for the, for the sport of professional wrestling. As a fan, you got to love it. And guess what? If you, there is something that you do not like, if you despise AEW, you never have to watch it. It is not the only thing on TV. Same thing for WWE. If you hate WWE, it is not the only thing on TV. You have New Japan. You have Impact. You have Ring of Honor. You have MLW. You have AEW. You have WWE, including everything else. Let's just enjoy what we like. With that said... Next week, Nick Houseman joining me on our preview to Double or Nothing. We'll be back. See you next time.